This video is made possible by my old man at EDC. My buddy Brad's got his little YouTube gig going, so go ahead and give him a sub. Thank you. Hey my friends, welcome to today's video. Thanks for sticking with me yesterday. I wanted to put something out even though I wasn't feeling too good, it was entirely self-inflicted, but most of you had an okay time watching me bungle through a how-to sharpening video. Hey, as the old saying goes, you can please everyone. Is that right? I just don't know what to do with myself. Anyway, today we are looking at this Light Duty Multi Tool. This is the Gerber Armbar. I've got it in the continuum here. <laughs> you know, from, from LDMTs to HDMTs and MD. Remember the Nut Fancy video? What a video that was. The continuum of multi tools. Awesome. Um, so this is definitely in this side of the continuum. It is not a plier based multi-tool. It is a knife or even a driver based multi-tool. So looking at a similar size footprint to a standard Victorinox. This is the Victorinox uh, Explorer. A little bit fatter there, but say a Tinker or something could be about the same size and even about the same weight. So you've got a um, relatively stout little tool set like it's a pretty well realized and well fleshed out and reasoned set of tools on this guy here um, what this is doing is going with this aesthetic this Gerber center drive aesthetic and I guess by arm bar I'm, I'm thinking they're saying it's a bit like just a single arm of a multi-tool which makes sense it even looks a little like they've got the same design aesthetic going there to the center drive, which was a pretty successful multi-tool. I think a lot of folks like this. I like everything about it except for the, um, the TC, which I still haven't gotten replaced. The TC cutters are really brittle and they've shattered on me when I cut like a thin bit of fencing wire. It was bizarre. Um, funny, like, is it just an odd story? Like I was at work and I actually needed to, an ambulance needed to get through a fence to get to someone. And so I got this out and cut the uh, fencing wire and on the second bit I think I might have twisted slightly as I was doing I was in a hurry and the TC cutters both just shattered at once and literally flaked out of the massive bummer but anyway the rest of the tool is pretty well assembled and pretty well done I just need to replace those cutters one day maybe right. anyway so this one here takes these design cues it's made in China though so this is an American made multi-tool this one for some reason they when made it in China even though they've obviously got the machining ability in America, but anyway, um, Chinese made Gerber, it is, the, the focal tool I guess is still the striving arm, um, the other tools are an awl, and they're all accessible by these little nail nicks here, an awl and some scissors, the other sort of two tools behind the driver, and then you've got a bottle opener on this end, pops up there, and then you've got a knife is on a liner lock made of Gerber's 5CR whatever it is mystery steel no doubt so I'll just go through all the tools and then talk to you about what I like and what I don't like about the knife so this is cool this driver what I like about it is that it is make it's magnetized so the things that sit in there well they don't fall out and it's universal so you can get your you know bit kit and you can put in anything you can put in a, a longer Phillips you know get even more reach you could put in a you got like a here's, here's a big old fat Torx wrench. You know you can put that in there. That's fine too. You could put in a you put in an extender and then you could put in an extended bit. And you've still got you know it'll turn. Won't close though. Boom. But there you go. Pretty cool, huh? So I like that about it. And it just comes with a double sided like a flat and Phillips bit. Pretty standard choice, really. So. There's that, that's the screwdriver, and it drives screws, no worries at all. The awl is for making uh, hole punching, punching holes in things. Uh, it's just a sharp little piece of steel. Uh, you can also use it for sort of marking on wood if you're doing um, like delicate projects, like if you're using really thin fret saws and things like that, you can use a really thin awl like this instead of a pencil sometimes to really kind of um, get in next to your saw blade and make lines and things like that. You can next cut across, so Awl's a handy little tool and I'm glad they went with an awl and not with just another redundant flat blade driver or something like that. And then the scissors are externally sprung, so the spring is that little bar there and little lever there, open and closed. The scissors cut 
things up to you know decent card or cardboard relatively well um, and just compare them with these Victorinox scissors sort of about the same size I don't like them as much as the Victorinox scissors they're probably a bit more stout because the spring is sort of nestled against a piece of steel the spring the Victorinox just kind of hangs out in the breeze but um, these are a bit bouncier, a bit more pleasant just to use in general so hard to really put it into other words than those but there you go so those are the scissors and they fold back and they fold back and very cool this little part here just sits nicely into there so all kind of goes together very well and on the other end there is the knife so the knife will be basic utility quality knife it's got a hollow grind on it so it actually cuts relatively okay despite the steels I'm not going to hold an edge for very long these Gerber steels just don't um, it's not even the 420 series it's just like the Gerber mystery sort of alphabet soup Chinese steel so it's fine and then on here you've obviously got like the liner lock here and then you know the visual aesthetic that they're sort of trying to keep going is this kind of they they, they say it's modeled after the suspension bridges in, in Portland where they made so yeah it kind of makes sense so they're going there with you know it's, it's a good looking little tool in my opinion bottle opener pops open at the end and I really like the bottle opener a lot it's still not it's not as good at actually lifting caps as the Victorinox, but it will certainly get under there. It's got a wide enough tooth and it does work. It's just sometimes you need to do a one, two sort of job. But yeah, I, I love the bottle opener. I just love this like little, it's got a really snappy little action to it. You can just, if like, you know, if you're like in Terminator here, Miles Dyson is sitting there all like, But yeah, um, cool little bottle opener. Anyway, the things that I like about it, I, I do like the tool set of it. I think the tools are well, you know, well thought out, like the actual tools to put on it. Yeah, it's, it covers a lot of utility. What I don't like about it is the execution of it, particularly. None of these tools have a particularly strong lock holding them open. There is a slight spring to this backing plate here, and each of the tools has a slight tooth that goes into the backing plate but it is weak as piss and you'll be driving and if you're holding back here it is especially if you're doing bigger which you know that you like to think a bigger driver like this is better for your slightly firmer screws perhaps when you're trying to you know you can very easily come off your yeah off your center um, and the awl is the same, so when I use the awl to make a hole in my belt for another belt loop hole because I have lost a little bit of weight lately and I've been reducing the size of my belts as I've been going, as I've needed, so I did that and again I noticed it sort of flopping around as I was doing it. It was kind of annoying, like it's um, a slight, a bit more pressure or even just a little button lock there would be, and I know I'd probably add a $5 or something to the tool, but it would just make it so much more usable and so much more practical because right now it's not enjoyable to use particularly. You can use it, like say the, the skeletal here, they're all functional and they're all enjoyable things to use. Like these, are, like the driver is fine to use. The knife is nice to use. Like it's the, the cap lifter even, if you use a carabiner, nice to use. These things, they're possible to use but they're not particularly enjoyable to use. And that's all these arm tools. Here, except for the scissors, which are well, so the scissors are fine, but they sort of I find them a little bit sort of stiff, a little bit kind of uh, yeah, just not quite there in my opinion. Like they are a little bit. I like the spring to push them open a little bit wider each time, so I'd like the spring to start up here maybe. So I could probably change that myself, but anyway. Scissors are probably the more successful of the internal tools. And then the knife, I guess, is fine. It's comfortable enough to use for like a few odd jobs every now and then. Um, but yeah, I would have liked to, again, the more knife-based tools, I would like to see them with pocket clips. Like you could put a thin pocket clip down here, you really could. And it would make it a lot more of a carryable and a lot more of an enjoyable tool to use. So there you have it. Look, it's a budget, it's, it's low cost doesn't cost you know an arm and a leg. Um, I, I like the little bottle opener and yeah, the driver is good. You just need to kind of hold it further up towards so you kind of lose a bit of that length that it's sort of trying to give you. But yeah, overall it's a bit of a mixed bag, a bit of a miss really. Like there's a lot they need to do for me to say get this over like 
even this guy here, the, the squirt's just got so many more tools in it. It's player based, weighs less, um, you know, more compromises here again, but I certainly wouldn't recommend it over a Victorinox Swiss Army knife. Like, I guess that's the barometer, isn't it? Like, that's the industry standard, and this is just sort of playing a bit of catch up. A very similar response, I think it's a response to Leatherman's sort of T series um, little pocket tools that they're spreaking at the moment, too. So, I think it's more responding to that than to these, but it's inevitably going to be compared to these because these do this so well and they've been doing it for so long. For example, the detents on this guy. Things proper, they're not locked, but they properly step into place. You've got a big thick spring here that it, you can feel the quality in it. It's um, even the lens, like the lens snaps open with more authority than these tools do, and that's plastic, you know. It's um, yeah, you just can't like you just can't knock that. It's yeah. I hope to illustrate it anyway. <laughs> that's that's the gist of it. Just needs a little bit more work before it's anywhere near competing with the industry standards at the moment. Like how it looks though. Like the idea. Like the tool choices. Just the execution needs a bit more work, in my opinion. That's the video today, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed. I will keep trying to make content uh, as much as I can. I'm going back to work soon though, and I work out in the thick of it in public human relations, <laughs> first response, that sort of stuff. So wish me luck, <laughs> don't know what I'm going back to. Um, but yeah, I will try and keep this going as rapidly and as consistently as I can so everyone's got lots of fun stuff to watch. Anyway, my friends, here's a clip of my dogs.